now taking a live look over equipment. It's weird to see how dark it is outside, trying to get used to that time change that happened earlier today. But first to know, meteorologist Alexa Trischler joins us in the Weather Center. Alexa, what's the status out in the tropics? We got two disturbances we're watching. The first one is going to stay out in the open Atlantic Ocean. It does have high chances for development over the next two days, but it's going to move out into the northeast and pose no threat to land. Now the second disturbance we have close eyes on right now does have high tropical or subtropical formation chances within the next two days. 80% that's coming from the National Hurricane Center and there is still some uncertainty on its exact track and its intensity, but this is a look at the GFS model and a low pressure center is expected to develop near the Bahamas early this week as it heads northward then it should shift to the west or southwest and move closer to the southern and central part of the Florida Peninsula. This is Thursday in the middle of the night, Thursday at 3 a.m. So then it's expected to kind of move more to a little bit to the west and then eventually head north and northeastward with our next incoming trough heading into next weekend, which will bring us much cooler and drier air next weekend, which we really deserve more fall weather. But the biggest impacts from this will happen right along Florida's eastern coast, perhaps even the Carolina coastlines and Georgia coastline and even the central and southern part of the peninsula. They could see some heavy rain throughout the middle and second half of this week. Some strong gusty winds, possibly some coastal flooding too, because there'll be northeasterly onshore winds that can create beach erosion, rough surf, coastal flooding, which unfortunately many of these communities having to pick up the pieces from Ian. This is not going to be an Ian storm but still can have some implications on our Florida Eastern coastal communities as we go throughout this week here for us locally because of that pressure gradient that's going to get created with that center developing to our southeast and high pressure to our north. It is going to turn windy Tuesday through Friday this week. Rain chances look to increase because of this system too on Thursday and Friday, especially for our eastern zones. But again, some track uh, the track can change a little bit, which will change our impacts just slightly. So far, we're not anticipating anything major from this here locally later this week. We'll just watch it. Keep an eye on the forecast uh, coming forward this week. We'll have better fine tuned details with that. But good news next weekend, much cooler and drier air is heading our way. First to know Titan Doppler radar showing a couple showers entering into Colquitt County right now, but most of us are dry. We'll trend mainly dry the rest of tonight. There could be a few hit or miss showers that shift west over the next three hours. Clouds will linger overnight starting tomorrow. Clouds will stick around, could see some areas of fog, especially in our eastern zones tomorrow morning. But by the afternoon, we should have plenty of sunshine. It's going to be another warm day with highs in the 80s, so we can't shake the warm weather just yet. But we'll stay dry and sunny Tuesday. And same with Wednesday. So here's a look at those windy conditions that will start Tuesday and will last through Friday. We could see wind gusts around 20 to 25 miles per hour at times, and those winds will come mostly from the northeast. That's what Tuesday through Friday looks like. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s midweek. Rain chances go up Thursday, Friday, only around 40 to 50 percent. Cooler next weekend looking good. More coming up.